Today is International Day for Fight Against Corruption. Now, in 2015, President Muhammad Buhari declared war on corruption and promised to intensify the fight against corruption. However, it is over four years later. How have we fared? Have we really achieved anything in terms of the fight against corruption? What do we have left to achieve? Uh, these are the kind of questions that we'll be asking. And joining us again, we still have smart uh, in the studio and of course we still have noble uh joining us on the conversation now i'm going to start with you smart the government of the day got into this administration on the backs of zero tolerance for corruption plugging all the loopholes recovering all the looted funds and here we are four and a half years down the road can we say that that fight against corruption has been successful has there been any tangible um successes that we can that have been recorded over the four years and are we still on course well as far as i'm concerned no is the answer really yeah you see one good thing that's and why well i was campaigning for president Muhammadu Buhari during the last election Somebody asked me, why are you campaigning for Buhari? They came up with this thing. I said, as far as I'm concerned, this man, maybe everybody around him might not, might, might not have integrity, but President Mamadou Buhari has integrity. You cannot take that away. He's very accountable, he's very dutiful when it comes to rendering accounts, well, especially if it has to do with financial accounting. That guy is very, so that is my stand. But as this government, this government presently, are they better off than what we have had in the past in terms of fighting corruption? In terms of corruption, no. If you talk about... Well, that's a big indictment because this yes, is... Yes, now I, I'm coming there. Now, you talk about, say, oh, but this government introduced TSA. Yes, single treasury... Uh, well, actually, the former the, government introduced no. it, but well, they, they, they made it happen. They, they, yes. they, impl they implemented it. Yes. yes, if you say we, they, we, they, they implemented BVN, even though it, it was on ground before, with single BVN now, look, if you have 20 accounts, it can be linked together and it can be easily be, you see, it, make, it makes uh, uh, um, auditing and tracing of related funds very, very easy to all the accounts. Perfect. But you see, the traces are still there. We still have government doing business. The only way, one major, one major way we can fight corruption is to take business out of the hand of government. Shikena you will solve that problem. The simple fact is that I was expecting this government was going to come. I was expecting Biden, Biden is going to say, look, an executive order, we are creating, an executive order, we are creating special courts. We are sending it, if you're not going to approve it, by the time I leave in another four years, hold me responsible for what I've done. Okay. But I am sending special courts. All court cases, all pending court cases, go and dust everything up, even though if it is my brother that is currently serving with me, if he has a case, let him go and save it. let him go and answer his case. I will not cover anybody. And we have a special court that we run, maybe a special court in, four, in the four, in the four, in the four uh, geopolitical, um, whatever, or six, six. geopolitical uh, uh, yeah, 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 zones. Let us have them and let us ensure that within 120 days that justice has been dispensed. Now, you see, why I, why I said no is that we are aware of Akbabio. He has some cases. In, you have some cases that EFCC is prosecuting him. Now it's now your minister. We have so many of these serving, uh, serving ministers. If I were him, irrespective of what, I have won the election, I have won the election. I will not pick anybody, anybody that currently have a case before the, as my ministers. They could go, ascend, they could go and contest election if they win. Thank God, Oji Zakalo, when I heard he was convicted, oh, you need to see the way, I, the, the, way I, the way I took brandy. I enjoyed myself. I was so excited okay. that this man, of course, he has got... Because the guy was doing as if, look, I am Buhari's number, number, uh, personal assistant. I am Buhari's personal assistant. Nobody can touch me. And they touched him. So that is what I talk about. And so the presidency came, they came clearly that, that because you are in this... I, 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 I accepted what uh, Oshobole said, that if you have committed an offense, if you come to APC... No, you are now, you, you have, your sins are forgiven. I take that as political statement. This government has not demonstrated that. But what the government should do, what the APC should do, is to go out, is, the EFC should do, do again, is to go out 
all the previous cases that are that are on ground, particularly Peter Udili, I still feel very, very bad for the justice system of this country that gave a perpetual injunction to Peter Udili. But then under he, what? But 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 I, of course we know, and we're going to come to Noble for that. But he cannot leave the country, and there, are, like he said, when those judgments are given, or you know, there are certain things that are. You know, there's a caveat of sorts saying you can't, I mean, he cannot travel out of the country because <laughs> he has a, a pending case. This is a country where you, people will travel and you won't even know. Uh, what was this, what's this guy called? This guy that ran away. Uh, what was this guy in, in Nandekano? Had a pending case. His passport is with the government. How did, he, how did he get out of the country? So, you see, this is a country where anything happened. But as far as I'm concerned, any serious government, any serious government should have contested and fought for that, and fought for the uh, for the stay of for, for the stay of um, execution of that perpetual injunction order. Why would you give a perpetual injunction? You are trying other governors. Look, if I were if I were if I were the, if I were if I were the governors of if I were the lawyers for all these other governors, I would seek on that because the moment you give a judgment, it is a precedent. Mm -hmm. We just hide under the same precedent that if um, this, if uh, uh, Peter Odile can have a perpetual injunction, of course they, are, they were both governors. What did Peter Odile have the perpetual injunction that, that will not make Ojo Izokalu to have a perpetual injunction too? There are, okay. there are people who, pundits and analysts, who say that the judiciary is part of the reasons why the fight against corruption is such a very difficult task because the executive cannot do this on its own. The, like he said, perpetual injunctions, the drag, you know, the, the excessive delay in court processes that have stalled these people. Because the truth is, people who try to defend Mr. President's um, anti-corruption war are always hit by the ball of which, how many persons have you truly convicted and sent to jail? Yeah. <clears throat> if you are really fighting corruption, well, or Jews or Kalu, well, uh, former governor of uh, Joshua Dari, Joshua Dari, just two. But then Johnny there are, Yami. you know, so, but then people will say, well, they're in the other administrations or the past administrations. What about the guys who work under you? And then, of course, there's the case of where people say the executive is still in charge of appointing who the attorney general of the federation is and all of that. How, how do we get past all of these blockades? Or could the Constitution be part of our problem? Okay. So, first of all, I don't think the Constitution um, is part of our problem. You don't think the Constitution needs to be revisited? Well, yes. Well, I mean... So, uh, isn't from that time a problem? To, well, not all, not all uh, parts of the Constitution... A Constitution that to... was taken from a military era into a democracy, yes. is it not a problem? Uh, well, not all sections of the Constitution needs to be amended, but some sections. So, but this thing borders on how well you do your job. So... If the president's uh, duty is to, uh, to appoint attorney general, then it behoves on the president to appoint men of in, a, a man of integrity, uh, a man of integrity into that position. So, if the attorney general, if the president appoints someone who they feel they can control, then it now behoves. It's 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 a it's a no no for the president. It's it's a slap on the integrity of the president. So, bringing it back to uh, the issue of. Um, uh, Former Governor Peter Odili and the, the perpetual injunction. So I, I I don't I don't think there is no injunction that cannot be vac vacated. So the injunction can actually be vacated. And also, are uh, you saying that nobody has really wanted to vacate it, and that's why it's still there? Oh, okay. So For over ten so, years. Well, over ten years, perhaps they've not been um, uh, a rigorous a vigorous attempt to do that. Because if someone picks up that case one day and say, I want to see this case to a reasonable conclusion. I mean, I'm quite sure the court will revisit itself. This brings me back to the question, how serious are we with fighting corruption? Because again, when we talk about corruption, the first thing that comes to mind is politicians. What about us, the roles that we play? Are we modeling ourselves in a way that people can learn from us? It is not the president or governors or senators who sit in those public offices that we go to and say, Madam, now 1,000 for this file, if not, you know, they go anywhere. First, you asked a question. I probably want to take it from there first. You said, is the constitution our problem? He said, not really. The constitution is our number one problem. That is it. Why is the constitution our number one problem is that 
that constitution vested power in the hand of Mr. President, in the hands of a governor, too much power. That makes them, the only thing I think Mr. President cannot do is to turn you tomorrow to a Bob Risky. Or turn me to a Bob Risky, I mean, what is his name? This guy that said he's, uh, he's not, that he's no more, he, 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 that he's... Yeah, that he's, we he's, understand. Yes. Let's, let's, let's now, let me tell you, the power that is vested in the hand of Mr. President is too much. And that is why things are not moving. Look, if you, when you have too much power, definitely there are bound to be corruption. Some people will hide under you to perpetuate corruption. I, see, I don't see the reason why today, why today, for goodness sake, we, we don't have, Nigeria does not have cause with poverty. The constitution is our problem. We should look at the constitution. And we, in looking at it, not just on part, we should look at that constitution holistically, number one. Talking about the issue of corruption, you see, we are also part of the problem. I will tell you, if today we say we want to demonstrate that the senators, we want to seal up that place until the senator reverts to say, okay, maybe the highest paid civil public servant, which is like the PAMSEC, let's do it that way. You see, some people that goes to meet the, minute, the senator, some people knows when the senator is coming, to their, to, coming back to his constituency. They will go and wait for him. They will go and meet him, give us handouts, give us, uh, my, my, my wife is sick, oh, my son's school fees, oh, my house rent, house rent. Where do you expect this people to get it from? If not from that very highly intimidating salary that they get from uh, as a public servant. And this is the country where we are talking about people living very, very below one hundred dollars per day. Per day. Not hundred, one dollar. One dollar per sorry, one dollar per day. And you still see some people going home with about thirteen point something million. Do you know what six million? They take six million out of their salary, out of thirty six out of one oh nine. You know what that means? That, that mean. You know that the number of employment that we create for people. Take from the, from the 360 something, 350 something house of rep, the same thing. Go to Lagos State House of Assembly, go to the various House of Assemblies. Go and see the kind of vehicles they, 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 they ride as official vehicle in a country where we are listening. So constitution is our problem, and we are also part of the problem because we see them as Seran Kadede. We see them and see, and see them as gods. When, so, it, when do I, you think we would possibly be able to Maybe even scratch the surface or see a holistic fight against corruption, see, not okay. only just living at the, the feet of government. Okay, first of all, let me react to uh, his problem, uh, his, um, uh, his opinion about the constitution and the fact that uh, the president has too much power. Well, of course, the president has, the president has power. He's the president of a nation. And this power has been bestowed on him by the constitution. But then again, we have to look at the fact that Nigeria is more like an institution. An institution is not just made up of robots, it's made up of individuals. So if we have, if our leaders are, if, if, if people who, are, who we put in there, who voted in, are acting as leaders, eh, I don't think they want to abuse any power as enshrined in the Constitution. Because the Constitution is very clear in several ways. The Constitution is very clear on separation of power. Okay, so their, 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 their rules and duties quit the president must not undertake. Well, we're not trying to defend the president in any way here so, or the constitution, but lastly, exactly. what we need to wrap up. Lastly, when are we as a people going to take responsibility for the fight against corruption and not politicians? I asked that question and I'm asking you. Okay, so um, first of all, I think uh, it has to be if there is a deterrence. So I can tell you in Nigeria... You don't think we have enough deterrence with all the powers that is in the Constitution? I don't think there's... Well, there is so much... Well, it doesn't think the Constitution is there on the paper. But practically, have you seen anyone who has been, who, who's been convicted and the government or, or the state has seen to a reasonable conclusion that the person suffers for his sins in Nigeria? Have we seen anyone like that? Too well, many. a former police chief ha has been sent to jail and still was in jail for a long time. Okay, I have a problem with that. The problem I have with that is, these people, obviously, from what we see, they go in jail, right? Okay, are they... Those, okay, for example, now, okay, let's look at you know, this particular uh, uh, government, which we are in this particular government. Is there any reputable opposition member, you know, that was uh, perhaps in the that perhaps was in the ruling party before, 
you know, that has crime allegations on his head that is in jail or that has been convicted? Yes. Of course. Three. Three. Okay, you mean the uh, the Ojizo Kalu of APC? My question is this. From the eyes of the layman, these people, I mean, obviously his case is being subject to appeal. But I can tell you from the eyes of the layman, we feel not, not much has been done. Interesting. So it's until we see serious deterrence. Because I can tell you from the eyes of a layman, oh, I know people will say, oh, there is a, perhaps Mr. Um, the former inspector general, I think it has Mr. Uh, Smith, right? No. Oh, Tafa Balogo. Tafa Balogo. Yeah, exactly. Excuse me. At, uh, yeah, Tafa Balogo. So, people, from the layman point of view, if there is enough deterrence, um, if, for example, you've heard that, oh, a former governor is wallowing in, is, uh, wallowing in jail and all his assets have been confiscated and perhaps uh, his children or his family are suffering for that, believe me, if the news circulates everywhere and Nigerians are wary of that, there will be a radical change in this country. I well, know, I, I want to say I thank you, guys. We don't have any more time. Noble no Abbas is a, a lawyer. And, of course, uh, Smart Akpejoye is a political analyst. We have to go. Thank you, gentlemen, for speaking with us. Uh, well, it's uh, time for us to take our PLUS uh, reports. And when we come back, I'll be giving you my take. People's Democratic Party in Ekiti State has called for the total cancellation of the local government elections held on Saturday. A total of 14 political parties participated in the election, including the ruling All Progressives Congress and the main opposition party, PDP. The People's Democratic Party in the state has, however, stated that the polls were marred by irregularities and violence as against the principles of fair and credible electoral process promised by the electoral body. That in all the local governments in the state, ballot papers and ballot buses were not supplied to over three quarter of the units. We are saying we are not even asking for cancellation in three. We are asking for a total cancellation of what they said they conducted yesterday to be an election. The dramatic rearrest of Shoare is still being denied by the DSS and the presidency. And uh, the president is somewhat supporting, you know, the brutal actions of the DSS uh, in a bid to rearrest Shoare. Yes, the DSS has its job cut out for it. But the manner in which they went about it, is it right? What is the rule of law in all of this? Why the lawlessness and disregard for the courts? Why have we reduced ourselves to this level? Because the whole world is watching today. It's showery. Tomorrow, it might be you, it might be me. What's next? Well, today is International Anti-Corruption Day, and from the look of things, we seem to not have been able to scratch even the surface of this fight. We don't seem to be ready to fight corruption. Are we ready? Because, look, here's the important thing. The fight against corruption has to start with all of us. Our country's group depends on the decisions that we make today. So. You and I need to pledge a commitment to modeling integrity and professionalism, pledge to treat others fairly and always do the right thing because the fight against corruption starts with ourselves. I am Mary Anna Cohn. It's been Plus Politics.